Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar today. We're really excited to share with you all everything Google Business Profile optimization and more, learning how to leverage your Google Business Profile and use Google Business Profile services. We have a lot of good stuff in store, and I could think of no better person to help me host it than Niladri. He is the VP of Strategic Operations at SignUp and he's a renowned expert <laughs> on everything Google. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Uh, we'll probably complete the presentation in about 30 minutes, max. And then I can hop on to any questions that you might have about your existing profiles or anything related to Google or your website in general. Yeah, great. So let's get started. OK. So a little bit about uh, what we do here at SignUp. Can you go to the next slide? So we leverage local listings, online reviews, and social media location pages to impact every stage of a customer's buyer's buying journey. Uh, ultimately, it help uh, grow your share of voice in search, increase your foot traffic to retail, and customer retention. Uh, I'm not going to go into an entire sales pitch about sign up, so you can look us up on online, go to visit our website. If you have questions later on, just uh, shoot us an email if you want. Uh, so why do you need Google My Business profiles? Uh, I'll give you a few statistics uh, to start off with, okay? There's like 3.5 billion searches uh, happening on Google every day. 1.2 trillion searches per year worldwide. In fact, Google now processes over 40,000 search queries every second on an average. 98% of consumers use the internet to find information about local businesses in 2022. 87% of consumers use Google to evaluate local business in 2022, which is up from 81% in 2021. These are industry statistics that we, we are all, many of us are aware of. It is estimated that uh, about 42% of local searches involve clicks on Google map path. That is where your local businesses show up uh, when, when customer searches for any product or services that they want to purchase locally. Okay, that, that's a typical Google My Business profile uh, that shows up on, uh, uh, on search results page if you have access to it. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see your existing profile with information related to your business, your business name, address, hours, phone number, uh, reviews, uh, rating, uh, Q&A, posts, etc. On the left hand side, you have, you have the new Google uh, Merchant Experience dashboard that uh, displays all the different sections of your Google My Business profile that you can update, add, uh, create, uh, optimize uh, on a regular basis. Okay, the profile strength the symbol that has been added uh, uh, that, that's relatively new is still buggy. Uh, for example, uh, I wouldn't break my head uh, over the fact if, it, if it's not 100% all the time. Uh, there are times it requires you to have a uh, Google Ads account to complete the profile strength. Uh, UI. So what is a local pack? So whenever you are searching on Google, uh, most, most often than not, the first line of information that you see is, uh, is Google AdWords. Then you see a three pack uh, local result that we, that we usually call uh, the local pack. Uh, it shows up three prominent business in, in search results. Uh, need to make sure that the query has local intent that is determined by Google. Uh, next page. And it shows up for a lot of relevant searches. So for example, you're searching for mattresses or Mac rooms uh, or even law firms near you. But for law firms, if you notice uh, towards the top, we have something called Google screened. Uh, that's local services ads or that, that show up uh, if you opt for it, it's a paid service, but after that, it's a, it's a free pack that shows up before the usual organic results. Go to the next page, please. 
same thing for local uh, services for related to locksmith searches. You first three results, uh, those blocks are actually Google guaranteed local search ads. Then you have uh, Google AdWords, and then you see the businesses one by one before the organic search results. So what should you optimize? I'm just assuming here that all of you have uh, either got your business verified on Google or you're working for your car clients who have their listings verified. I'm not going to go through the steps of uh, verifying a business. Uh, if you need any relevant information, uh, then you can just reach out and we can provide you the information if you need. Uh, so I'm assuming that all your businesses are already verified. So the first most important about a thing that you need to provide Google is your business name. Now, what is a business name? So as per Google, business name should represent your business as it's consistently represented and recognized in the real world across signage, stationery, and other branding. Uh, that means that uh, whenever you're using your business name, make sure it's the registered business name, name that people use uh, to identify your business in the real world. It should ideally match your permanent signage that you have outside your business and other business documents like your ut utility bills, et cetera. Uh, the point being that uh, there are times Google will request additional information like pictures and utility bills to identify and make sure that it's a genuine business and uh, you will need to provide the information if you want to stay verified, okay? Uh, I've seen a lot of businesses making mistake while adding the business name. They would add uh, additional descriptors like a store code or a business marketing tagline, or even the location information like a city name or a zip code or special characters in the business name. Those are a strict no-no. Uh, yes, I'm aware that there could be businesses that uh, get away with doing that, but try and avoid that as much as you can. Uh, do not stuff keywords just to rank better. For example, uh, your business name is uh, Daniel Silver Incorporation, and uh, that's your legal name. And uh, just because you want to rank for, for example, you, you're selling mattresses, as an example, just do not insert the term mattresses or any related services or product terms in your business name if you want to run better, okay? Uh, reason being, uh, there are times Google will not catch it, but when they catch you, they will either edit your business name automatically, or they can simply suspend your business. Let's not take that chance. Uh, I've seen a lot of multi-location businesses uh, doing this uh, all the time. Uh, they add their city name or zip code along with the business name. Uh, and whenever you try and go, try to go and bulk verify their account with Google, you usually come across problems where Google ask, will ask you to edit your name to match your signage or your legal name and then resubmit the information. So naming consistency across Google profiles as well as your other citations or local listings like on Yelp or yellow pages or Bing or Apple Maps, it matters. So make sure you identify the uh, right name and use it not just on Google, but across all your local listings and citations. Uh, there's one question that uh, we come across frequently from clients, and I've seen a lot of content about it and uh, misinformation about it that I wanted to address. Does having keywords in the business name help you rank better? Uh, the resounding answer is yes, it does. Uh, we have seen businesses rank better just because they have a certain keywords in, uh, related to their primary category uh, in their business name. It helps them rank better. I've seen uh, businesses uh, change their legal name uh, to stay on the safe side by adding including uh, the major keyword 
into the name. It helps them run better. However, with more and more people doing it, uh, that slight advantage that you get uh, goes away when everybody starts doing it in your local market. So if you want to do it, or you want to change your legal entity, uh, just, just for the sake of Google, uh, I recommend caution. Okay, uh, the next most uh, important uh, section in Google My Business or Google Business Profile as we now know it, is the business category. It's important that you identify your primary category. Uh, for example, if you're an automotive uh, auto dealership, uh, use the primary category as a car dealer and not a Honda dealer. Uh, identify the right category, uh, use it as the primary category. Google allows you up to 10 categories. You can add one primary category and up to nine additional categories but make sure they are all relevant to your businesses. Otherwise they might get removed or could cause other issues uh, with the, your ranking and visibility of your Google My Business profile in the local bank. You have to pick a category from an existing list that Google provides. Uh, they keep updating the list uh, every few months, but uh, you cannot insert custom categories into Google. They do, just do not allow it, okay? Uh, some citations uh, or, or listing provider may allow you to add custom categories, but they, they, they are used for internal categorization only. Uh, publish a side of things. Uh, do not allow custom categories, uh, as far as I know, with most major publishers. The categories you select need to describe your core business and should not be unrelated. Okay. For departmental and practitioner profiles, by departmental profiles, I am talking about business within a business. For example, uh, uh, hospitals may have multiple departments, uh, specialization departments that they can create a separate Google profiles for or, or Healthcare practitioners, uh, doctors, dentists, et cetera, can have their own profiles that is separate from the business they are associated with. They can have their own specialization. So for these listings, the additional listings for departments and practitioner profiles, make sure you use one category that uh, truly represents that department or that uh, specialization of the practitioner or the doctor or the lawyer etc okay do not jam up all 10 categories for every department you profile or every practitioner profile that you create is going to mess up your listings and could could pose a lot of challenges okay uh, Google uses a term called proximity when they're defining local search results uh, how how Oh, close is the business that or the service provider uh, is from where you are searching from because of personalization. So business address is very critical, uh, just like business name uh, for the success of any business. Provide your accurate address. Do not embellish. Do not add additional detail just because you are trying to rank for a different location or a, another location or another city or another zip code. Okay. Google does not usually allow your box and mailbox addresses to be used as the primary address. But if you do have to mention mailbox, then insert it in the address line two that Google provides uh, so that they can use it. That's the norm. Those that that's as per the guidelines. Virtual offices are strict no-no. Uh, though I've seen my businesses that uh, have done well with virtual offices, they, they, they figure out a way to get around it. But uh, if Google finds out it's a virtual office, they will demand that you re-verify and ask for uh, proof. And if you're not able to provide it, they are basically going to suspend your listing forever. Uh, 
try not to create more than one profile for each business uh, until and unless it's a multi practitioner or a multi location business. For each business location, you have just one business profile. Anything else will be termed as duplicate and will be removed. It is not going to help you run better. Departments within certain businesses, universities, hospitals, government institutions may have their own Google profiles. Uh, that this is something that we have seen a lot of businesses missing out on. I've seen a lot of, uh, we work with a bunch of hospitals, a lot of hospitals. I've realized that a lot of hospitals do not create uh, multiple listings for each department. Okay, hospitals are able to create them, government institutions can create them, uh, businesses that have other businesses within the business are able to create, are allowed to create them rather. For example, automotive dealerships uh, can create a separate listing for the service, uh, parts and service department, one for the body shop department, maybe one for the finance uh, department if they have uh, separate hours and, and customer facing individuals. Uh, available. Some auto dealers uh, do have large lots due to which they are still on address model. So, so auto dealerships uh, and healthcare providers have separate guidelines on Google that you can give a read uh, if you are uh, dealing with uh, such a business or have clients in in automotive or healthcare segment. Uh, the slide deck will be distributed uh, later, either today or tomorrow, once we're done with the call, along with the recording of the uh, video. Yeah. Similarly, doctors, dentists, lawyers, uh, insurance agents, uh, even real estate agents, mortgage brokers, financial planners can have separate profiles for each practitioner. For example, your mortgage company with like uh, 100 branches and uh, 500 uh, uh, mortgage brokers you can have one listing google profile listing for each branch you can have uh, one profile for each uh, mortgage broker associated with the business uh, and and they are all they are all fine. Just make sure that your web uh, category you build your website in such a fashion so that you have individual landing pages created for uh, each location as as well as each, each practitioner. Business description. Uh, this has been a point of contention for several years that I've been in this business. Uh, right now, Google allows you to enter up to seven hundred fifty characters uh, as a business description. And most of the business descriptions that I see are, are written, written from the perspective of uh, people trying to optimize it for search results. Uh, business description within Google is not a search ranking factor. So it doesn't matter how many keywords you include in it, it's not going to help you rank better. Okay. Rather than that, I would say use it to put your best foot forward. Uh, provide relevant information you have about your services or your products or your expertise, uh, how long you have been in the business, uh, how many years of experience your business has of dealing with uh, such and such service or products uh, using it. Uh, I would rather optimize it for conversion rather than search. Uh, additionally, do not try to publish links or sales offers except for in your business descriptions, uh, they will either get rejected or may cause other issues like suspension. Website, one of my favorite subjects. Uh, well, a well-optimized website still helps you rank better in local search. Uh, website have, websites have gained prominence and traditional less you search engine optimization, best practices uh, applies here as well, okay? So your site structure, uh, the speed of your website, relevant content, uh, internal linking, quality of external links or backlinks, usability of your website, the information available of your website, all, all uh, make up your uh, ranking factors, okay? Uh, Multi-location businesses, uh, 
should have a separate location page for each location or partition. Uh, they should be optimized for that location only. Uh, I would suggest creating dedicated page for each service or department on your, on your website and optimize it with content and make sure they are internally linked uh, properly to get the best out of it. Use schema uh, judiciously to format your content better. It also makes it easier for search engines to understand your content better. Okay, you cannot, uh, you can go to schema.org and uh, there are a bunch of free tools that you can use uh, to generate uh, schema for your website. And not just for your uh, local landing pages, for your NAP name address phone number, you can also generate schema for your articles, you can generate schema for your product pages, for your services pages, uh, guides, FAQ pages, etc. Uh, always use high quality images to showcase your brand and facilities and the services that you provide. Uh, I would avoid uh, using stock images of any kind on these landing pages, and especially on your Google My Business profile. So I'm not sure if any of you have uh, noticed it, but uh, services and products sections on your Google My Business or Google Business Profile account is active based on the category of your business. There have been a lot of studies recently, uh, including a few that have been published by Sterling Sky. We have done our own tests as well, and it looks like uh, adding services uh, to your business profile at present is helping you rank better. It will help you show up for service-related uh, search queries in local results. Okay, uh, there are links provided here that you can uh, review when you have some time. Uh, services can be added from a predefined list, uh, like you see on the right-hand side over here on the screenshot. Uh, this is, uh, these are the services that show up uh, for an architect that we work with. Uh, you can add, uh, you can select, uh, the right services based on what you what you cater to. Additionally, they also Google also provides a custom service uh, option where you can add up to 120 characters. Again, while even while adding custom service, just make sure you do not just not trying to spam it with keywords. Okay, uh, the Google will remove it. Uh, there is a. There will be a link to a step-by-step -step guide uh, uh, provided in the deck that you can go through. Is Google's own documentation. We can send over our, our documentation how to add services as well. Uh, you can showcase your products from the products tab and even set up a product feed using Google Merchant Center. For example, if you know if you have a live inventory that you want to display, you can make use of Google Merchant Center. Sign up for it and set up a product feed. Or if you want to just uh, showcase a handful of your top products, you can just manually go and add them on to your, through the Google Business Profile dashboard. Photos and videos, okay. Uh, photos. So best way as per me to showcase your business, apart from all the information that you provide are photos. We are, we are, we are very visual people. We'll, we want to see photos of the businesses that we want to do business with. Uh, if you're like me, I want to see videos of those businesses. So what kind of photos can you add? Uh, everyone has a smartphone now, put, put it on the uh, highest, uh, format or HD format that it allows and make sure you take high quality images. Okay, uh, do not try to photoshoot them. Do not try to add layers. Uh, do not use your offers or website or social media banners and upload them to Google. They are not just not going to show up. Google wants real world images and videos of your business. So make sure you have your storefront images. Uh, make sure you take uh, uh, shots 
inside the office or store or the business. Uh, if you're a lifestyle brand, I would suggest taking high quality images or even getting appointing a quality photographer to do a photo shoot and use those images. Just not just not on your Google My Business profile. Use them on your Google My Business profile and also use them on the landing pages that you link them to on your website. Okay. So that it kind of uh, marries the two, the offline and the online world. If people get an idea of how your business looks like. It sets the right expectations for any customer. Uh, Google will auto-categorize your photos at, at this point. Uh, we used to have this option with the old dashboard where you could categorize a certain image as a cover image or a logo or any staff images or interior images, etc. Uh, with the new merchant experience dashboard, Google removed that option. So the better the quality of your image, it, it makes it easier for Google to understand what it is for and categorize it accordingly. Additionally, if you have the resources, uh, there are services like Google Vision that you can use to classify your images. I think there are there are products, one or two products in the market that can can help you class uh, classify your images and before you pub publish them on Google. I've seen a lot of services talking about geotagging images with uh, location specific data and exit information so that it helps in ranking. Uh, honestly, it does not help. Uh, people have been selling such services for for years, and it does not help now. It never helped back then, because Google usually strips all metadata or exit data from your images before they consume them. So do not waste time geotagging photos. It does not help you to rank better. Uh, for videos, uh, Google usually allows around 30 second videos at the moment. Uh, earlier, they, you could publish uh, YouTube videos on it, but uh, they removed that option. Right now, you can directly upload uh, videos, 30 second videos, high quality videos to Google. Uh, and that helps a lot because videos are great for conversion. Uh, videos can uh, in a very short span of time, provide a lot of information to your prospective customers. Uh, you can create short videos around your product to showcase them. You can create short videos uh, for services. For example, somebody's uh, service in a car or, or a vehicle is in a body shop. You can take short videos uh, and publish them on Google. You can create video walk uh, walkthroughs of your facilities or walk around of your offices or your premises or your salon or your parlor or your gyms so that you set the right expectation and people know what they're signing up for. Uh, other ideas, uh, you can use FAQs to answer questions that people have asked uh, previously that's relevant to your business. You can even share video testimonials uh, from clients without, without using personally identifying information. Okay, reviews. I think most, most customers I come across, they usually use Google for two purposes. One is, one is to rank better, and one is to showcase the reviews that they have from the clients. Uh, need to understand the majority of local buyers read reviews before making a purchase decision, especially local customers. Uh, most customers tend to ignore reviews that, that are more than three months old. That is the reason why you need to consistently keep getting new reviews from your customers. Uh, if you do not ask for them, they are probably not going to write uh, anything and uh, more 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 often than not i have noticed uh, disgruntled customers usually tend to write more reviews than happy customers so you need to ask those happy ones 
in fact, ask every customer to write a review for you. So try, be consistent. Uh, do not make it a quarterly or an annual affair that you take a list of customers that you have purchased uh, services or products from you and then go and ask for reviews or send them an email blast. Uh, I recommend asking for a review while the customer is still in front of you. Okay, uh, once once you once they're out of there, and they, they, they probably they, most probably they're not going to write a review. Uh, if that is not possible, I would recommend sending out a daily review request. Uh, make a list of your customers who have done business with you on a particular day, end of the day or the next morning. Just send out a request, either via email or SMS, asking them to write a review for you. Uh, do not incentivize reviews. Uh, that's a strict no-no in the industry. Uh, do not try to pay them. Uh, do not buy reviews from providers because Google started deleting a lot of uh, these fake reviews last year. And due to the nature of the problem, uh, a lot of businesses lost a lot of genuine reviews along with it. Uh, respond to reviews as fast as possible uh, to show customers that you really care about them, their business. Uh, it has an additional benefit. What we have seen and noticed with our clients is uh, you can actually turn a bad review into a good review with a fast response. If you are able to interject uh, immediately after a bad review is written for your business, you may be able to turn that customer around. Uh, we've noticed uh, industry statistics say that a third of the customers are ready to change their rating if the business responds to or reaches out to them uh, faster after the, after the writer negative uh, review. Uh, the number of reviews you have after a certain point does not necessarily matter from a ranking perspective. For example, if you have like 20, 25 reviews already, and some of issues, you see some of your competitors have like 300 reviews that they purchased. It's really not going to help you rank better if you have uh, 300 more reviews for your business. Okay. However, uh, reviews are great for conversion. So the more reviews you have, better your conversion. Uh, reviews are also a major ranking factor if you are using local services ads. I think that's the topmost ranking factor uh, for local services ads. Uh, maybe that's the reason why people are buying reviews left, right, and center, uh, especially the ones who are running ads. Uh, genuine reviews from matter uh, from customers matter. Uh, review consistency also matters when it comes to your ranking. But uh, but things like keywords in reviews or using keywords while responding to reviews, thinking that is going to help you rank better, it does not uh, help you rank better. If something that can be manipulated so easily will never help, help you rank better. So avoid doing it, avoid asking customers to mention keywords while writing reviews. It's a good practice to ask them to maybe uh, post a picture or two if they can along with the reviews. If you're genuinely interested in that customer and you genuinely believe that uh, you have serviced that customer well and they're really happy with you. Avoid review gating. That is selectively asking only the happy customers to write a review. Uh, that's against Google's guidelines as well. Uh, and customers have a tendency to uh, look at businesses with perfect rating with suspicion because they don't usually look genuine. If you have a large number, you have like large number of reviews and not a five star ratings. Uh, I would be a little suspicious. <laughs> uh, next slide, please, Madeline. Uh, posts. That's another free tool that Google provides you. Uh, this is not uh, similar to Twitter or Facebook. It is not a social posting platform. 
uh, posts provide uh, you with an option of uh, posting, showcasing your offers, showcasing your products, showcasing, uh, showcasing your services. It's a, it's a customer facing message uh, that you can add to your business profile. Uh, you can provide relevant updates related to your business. You can post uh, information about customer events or sales or offers uh, that you're conducting. Uh, you can showcase new products or services that you have launched. Uh, I've seen certain businesses using uh, uh, customer testimonials. Uh, Images from images of customer testimonials uh, to to post. Uh, that that could be a good idea if you are doing it correctly. Just do not copy paste your testimonial from Google and post it as a post on Google itself. Uh, it does not make sense. Uh, we have seen a lot of stock images getting rejected for single and multi location businesses while while they use, when they use it on Google posts. So try and avoid them. I use genuine images. And also avoid adding phone numbers and links uh, links that redirect. If you are linking to a particular page, make sure that page is active, that page is updated with the necessary information before you use it on posts. There are two other sections inside Google My Business that most businesses don't make use of. One is business messages that you can activate from your Google My Business dashboard by setting it up, or you can even activate from your Google Maps app on your mobile. Works on both Android and Apple. Uh, it, it's, it's primarily a chat function uh, that allows you real-time communication with your existing customers or potential customers who may have a question or two about your business before they come in, they drop by, or they, may, or they may ask you if you have certain thing in stock or if you have time or your schedule. So make sure you activate it if you have the resources and respond to your customers. FAQ is another great section to showcase frequently asked questions from your customers. Customers can post questions that business owners can respond to uh, from time to time. Uh, and they show up on your business profile on search. And not, and you can also post your own questions and answer them. For example, if you are aware of uh, certain questions that customers usually ask when they come in and uh, you want to inform customers beforehand, just post those questions on your Google My Business profile and respond to them. That way Google, uh, Potential customers will find the information right there on your profile without, without the need to ask you. Okay, if you do not respond to your FAQs, uh, someone else will. So make sure you monitor these sections on a regular basis. If you have your chat or business messages activated, uh, you can respond to them from the Google My Business dashboard. You can even respond to them from your mobile phone if you have the uh, Google. Google Maps apps installed. Next deck, please, Marlon. Okay, this is this is another headache that <laughs> we all have to encounter from time to time uh, because Google keeps crowdsourcing information and making changes to your verified listing. Uh, we assume that once we have verified a listing, it's done and dusted. We don't need to update it ever again. But Google being Google, they can do all sorts of things. Uh, they can crowdsource information based on uh, user inputs. They can crowdsource information based on information available in a website or third party websites and make changes and suggest changes. They usually show up as Google updates uh, with a yellow marker on your Google business profile dashboard that you can go in and accept or reject after reviewing it. Uh, so I recommend if you are a single owner business or uh, if, if you're if you have just one or two businesses, just monitor them on a weekly basis. Go into your Google My Business dashboard uh, on a weekly basis and review these updates. You can approve or reject them. Uh, it could 
potentially cause issues uh, if if someone wants to spam your business and change your number or potentially change your uh, website address or any search relevant information. So it's a good practice to review it on a weekly basis. We at sign up, uh, we have a tool through which we auto reject them uh, for multi-location businesses. Uh, so, and then we verify it manually to make sure those changes have not taken effect. Next. Please. Tracking. Uh, Google does provide a very basic dashboard with information that shows you number of profile views you have had. What they also used to show you what what keywords people have searched for, what uh, how many driving direction requests or how many phone calls you have received from your uh, Google Business profile. Uh, what I recommend or we traditionally do is we use YouTube parameters uh, in the website field uh, on our Google My Business landing page and track it via Google Analytics. That way I can tie it with our organic search results report and, uh, and understand the ROI. Uh, you can even use call tracking numbers on your Google My Business profile if needed as a secondary option. Uh, to track your calls. I think it will most benefit multi-location businesses or service area businesses to understand the ROI from Google My Business. Uh, don't worry about uh, an NAP because Google has gotten better at identifying these numbers and understanding business entities much better than they used to even a couple of years ago. So if you want to track uh, calls, uh, feel free to use call tracking numbers on your My Business Profile. It's not going to suddenly mess up your local SEO. Uh, we have a built-in automation at sign up to which we publish YouTube parameters for multi-location businesses uh, on the fly. It takes a few seconds to set it up. So if you want to learn how to do it, uh, give us a holler or we can send you the link uh, to a guide uh, along with the deck. Okay, another nightmare situation. Suspensions. <laughs> a lot of businesses do get suspended uh, for uh, reasons beyond their control at times. But uh, we have seen patterns uh, over the past several years, why it happens. So here are four of them. Uh, one is avoid multiple edits in a short span of time, especially do not edit the same field multiple times within within a few seconds or minutes. Uh, it sounds uh, like a very weird practice, but uh, some people do it and they end up getting suspended for no reason. Uh, you need to understand that most of the suspensions happen uh, via an automated system. There's a, it's not a manual suspension that people go in and suspend their listings. Either it happens because of user practices or it happens because somebody reported your profile as spam or reported some other issue. Try and use an email address. This is something that I advise every client to do that whenever you are trying to claim and optimize your Google My Business listing, uh, whatever email address you use, try, try and use an email address that is uh, hosted at your, at the, at, on the same ad domain as your website. For example, uh, if your website is signup.com and your business is signup.com, try and create a Google account, Google business account using something at signup.com. Uh, that way, there are two advantages. Uh, it associates your actual business with your actual website. Secondly, whenever, secondly, whenever you communicate with Google, they know it's a genuine request coming from the business owner or somebody who is authorized. Uh, avoid linking to URLs that redirect to other another page or website. A lot of people use URLs, uh, typical bait and switch tactics that used to work once upon a time, it no longer does. If you have a 301 redirect or a soft 302 redirect on your existing uh, URL that you're using on Google in the website field, uh, it could lead to suspension of your uh, business profile. So make sure you verify. Uh, do not link to social media channels in the website field. 
Uh, if you if you don't have a website, maybe create a free website using the uh, Google websites and add it to your website field. Do not try to link to something like your YouTube profile or Facebook profile uh, from that field. It could cause potential issues. Con contacting Google support. Now, all that has happened, you have done everything right, but there are issues with the information that is displayed on your profile. It's not displaying the right phone number, or it's not right displaying the right business name, or there is a small issue with the address that it's displaying. Even after multiple edits, the right information doesn't seem to stick. What do you do? One, uh, log into your Google My Business profile. On the dashboard on the left-hand side, you will notice a support option, which links to a form um, that you can uh, fill out with the relevant information about your business and the issues you are facing along with your contact name and phone number, Google will respond. Make sure you use the same email address that you use to manage your Google My Business profiles uh, to submit such requests. Or if you're working with a client, make sure you use the client's email address and contact information while submitting the request. That way, that way Google gets in uh, touch with the directly with the business owner or someone who's authorized to solve the issue. I uh, provided the link to the form here. Uh, every time you submit a ticket with Google, it will generate a ticket ID. So make a note of that uh, on the screen. They will also email you. Uh, if you need to refer back to them or contact them again, make sure you use the ticket ID as a reference. If you have to get in touch with them about the same issue again. Use the Google My Business Forum. You can just type Google My Business Forum on Google. You will find a very helpful community with lots of questions similar to yours that may have been previously answered. Uh, you will not be able to talk to someone directly from Google in the community. however. You'll find a lot of community members as well as uh, different levels of product specialists who will be able to guide you in the right direction. If you're big on Facebook, you can go to Facebook slash Google Business Profile and uh, write on the wall, or you can directly message them. Unfortunately, Twitter DMs used to work wonders for me, but that has stopped since the beginning of COVID, and it does not look like Google is going to restart that anytime soon. But if you have a critical, critical, business critical issue, you might be able to tweet at uh, Google business team and they might be able to get back to you. Okay, open for questions if you, anyone has any. Hello. Yes, Brandon. Yes. Yeah, so um, you were talking earlier about services and products and how on a main website domain, you recommend businesses to have different landing pages for their services and products. Um, what would you recommend for uh, content or information, photos or videos for such um, Separate pages. So let's, let's, like let's take a real life example, right? Uh, what kind of uh, website or business do you manage? We are, uh, we do facility services. Okay. So, for example, we're a fire protection company. So, we offer maintenance and services to extinguishers, sprinkler systems, alarm systems, et cetera. We do their maintenance. You just answered my question. So if you're fire protection services, use a main category page as fire protection services. Write about fire protection services in brief. Uh, treat that as a pillar page and then link out to additional related services that you provide. Sprinkler can be a subcategory or subtopic. Uh, anything related to it can be a subtopic that you can link to. Then you in turn link them. Make sure you add them to your Google My Business profile as well before adding them to your website. Okay, uh, you can write it about your. You can write it yourself, uh, or you can uh, 
maybe use a content writer to write it. Try and avoid using ChatGPT <laughs> if you want to benefit it from the long, long run. Okay. Uh, what I would recommend is just go on, go and search for the keywords that you are trying to rank for on Google. Look at the five first five to ten results. See the type of content they have. Okay. okay. Then you can mimic the type of content they have. Maybe use their headings, subheadings, etc., and create a, create a content beef for your writer. Okay. And you said there to are... avoid uh, stock photos and all that as well especially on these services pages uh, avoid stock photos but the kind again again dip, depends on the business right if i'm making macarons i'm a bakery then i can take my own photos i don't need to buy photos right for a business such as yours uh, you can use stock photos just make sure you name the photos correctly while while uploading to them to your website sounds good Okay, so do some topic research. May make uh, make a list of your primary keywords, uh, secondary keywords. If you need help, just just drop me an email. Sounds good. Is your it's email service in the chat. we provide? But I'm happy to help anyone who joins the webinar. Uh, is your email in the chat at all? Or my first name Ladvi at uh, Simon.com. Oh, yeah, in the chat now. Sweet. Okay. Any other questions? I have more if no one asks. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, so with keywords specifically, um, a thing that I want to avoid when writing content on either the business profile or even the website is keyword stuffing. How would you recommend in a smart and strategic sure. way to? So this is what I do when Madeline is our, Madeline heads our content team. She's our content and community manager. She's the writer, I'm not. So. Madeline, you have an answer for that? The way that so... you avoid content, like keyword stuffing is that you you take your topic and you write for it more naturally. So you don't try to think, oh, how can I get this keyword in there as many times as I can? Right. Just write it naturally. And then if you need to optimize it, then go back later and add more of the keywords. Uh, you can, you can, there are several tools that you can use, Brandon. Uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they come with month, uh, monthly subscription. One tool that I've been using personally for, for the last couple of months and found it good for such a purpose is uh, one is chat GPT to create content outline. We don't generate content out of it, but we just create a rough outline and use it for research. Secondly, there's, there's a tool called Surfer SEO that can help you create clusters around your key topics. Okay, so write the content first, then go into Surfer, Surfer or a tool like Surfer SEO to optimize it. Okay, do not look at the optimization score and try to get 100% or 80%, 60% or 70, 60% is enough. Okay, just okay. just make sure it reads natural. You know what I mean. Thank you. No problem. Mohammed, uh, can we update services in bulk for 600 locations? Uh, not with Google, but with a tool like SignUp, you can. Google does not provide the option to for bulk uploading services, but sign up. We have created a system using their API through which uh, we can upload services or any information in bulk. Uh, you can upload it for 600 locations. You can upload it for 6,000 locations if you need. Any other questions? I guess not. So we can wrap this up. Yeah, thank you guys so much for joining. This was great. Thank you so much again to Naladri for this super informative um, webinar. We'll be sending out the recording and the deck to everyone who joined as well as those who weren't able to make it. So um, you can look for that in your emails. And if you have any questions, you can just um, shoot us an email or contact sign up on any social media or on our website if you have further questions. And if you'd like to try out sign up for yourself, if you want to 
do any of the things that Niladri mentioned or bulk bulk update your services or do anything like that, that we have a 14 day free trial going on right now. If you go to signup.com, you'll see it on the homepage um, if you want to try it and see if it's right for you. So yeah, thank you everyone for joining. Hope you have a lovely day. Thank you so much, guys. No problem. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.